Okay, so on to the next track in Let's Be Frank Again series, man. This series has been amazing. Absolutely fantastic. We've had so many great tracks, lots of great uh, classics, a uh, great variety of music. But now we're on to another playing for change. This one over here is Biko featuring Peter Gabriel. I think I actually reacted to uh, Biko by Peter Gabriel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think I reacted to that. I think this might be just uh, playing for changes version of it. But anyway, anyway, uh, let's uh, rock and roll. This uh, over here, uh, sorry, there's a message here from Frank, so I need to read that. This is the song about Steve Beaker you reacted to in your f Okay, okay, so I have. <laughs> so I have. So, so you reacted in the first series, Let's Be Frank. Did I? I thought it was after that that I reacted to that. But anyway, okay. Here, Peter Gabriel is joined by musicians across the planet in 2021. Uh, for the people of South Africa. That is absolutely awesome. For those of you who don't know Steve Biko, Steve Biko was uh, a freedom fighter in the apartheid uh, for South Africa. And uh, unfortunately, he was very much abused until he actually died um, they, they, uh, um, during interrogation. And when they actually had him locked up, um, they actually beat him up and they tortured him. And then afterwards, they put him in the back of the van, of an ambulance van, right? Um, but it wasn't actually, um, they put him there on, on a cold steel uh, um, uh, sort of flooring and while they were traveling and he had suffered so much head trauma uh, that he later, he later died. But he was fighting for the South African cause, man. He was fighting for, um, as were many other um, um, fighters in South Africa to get them out of apartheid. Oliver Tumba, Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela, uh, Russell Ramaphosa was actually part of that fight as well. So was Jacob Zuma, although he landed up being one of the most corrupt presidents of South Africa, <laughs> regardless of that, right? Um, um, uh, Bisham Desmond Tutu. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, guys that were freedom fighters who fought for the, the independence and freedom of South Africa um, and obviously their people. So anyway, let's uh, rock and roll. For those of you who have only joined us now, I suggest you go back to the beginning of this series. Um, it's been an absolutely awesome series. Just follow along from there. Trust me, go to the beginning and just follow the progression. Why not? Let's go. Guguletu. Now, Guguletu, South Africa. Now, South African choirs are absolutely beautiful. Like, I get goosebumps the moment I hear this. This is within, this is in my blood. This is in my DNA. It's something about <laughs> like this. It's just, I don't know, it roots me with like this country. I was born here. I was the only one born here. My entire family was born in Portugal. And my dad had a project in South Africa. And he left Portugal to come do here. My mother was already pregnant with me. And I was born in South Africa in 1985. Right. So um, it's it's even though I love Portugal. Right. It's the it's the, the country of my heritage and whatever else. So that this is the only reason I'm the only one here still in South Africa. My whole family has left South Africa. Everybody. And for some odd reason, I can't leave this place because this is home. Like for some odd reason, I'm so connected with this. Like even when I go to Europe and things like that, after like a couple of like three, four weeks, I'm like, I, just, I need to go. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I'm of the soil, man. See how these people live out there with the shacks? They're called, they're actually called townships, right? And there is, I mean, the unemployment rate in South Africa is what, now 50%, probably coming near, nearing 60%, right? And um, the sad part about this is that the majority of people in South Africa live like this. And the people who promised them to give them a bit of, better life did nothing but steal from them. They didn't not give them, they didn't give them a better life. They did nothing but steal from them. That is the thing that I have the most, most gripe with because we're talking about a man like Nelson Mandela who fought and gave his life for this cause just for the people who stood beside him at the time to come in and to actually rape 
this country for all it is worth, right? The amount of money that has been stolen, the, the corruption level that is that is uh, um, that we have in South Africa is unlike anything seen in the world ever. I think we've got the highest corruption, one of the highest corruption rates in the world, right? And money that is being stolen from people that desperately need it, desperately need it, right? And they give their people absolutely no hope. It's 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 absolutely devastating. Beautiful quote over there. It's better to die for an idea that will live than to live for an idea that'll die. It's a very famous quote by uh, Steve Biko. Not that any of these politicians are holding up to that idea. Port Elizabeth weather fine It was business as usual In police room 619 All people actually um the soweto riots for those of you who don't know this over here that picture over there um, was a soweto riot i can't remember the the kid's name that got shot by um the riot police got shot and killed by the riot police there's actually a museum in soweto that uh, takes you through that entire tragic story as well well you can also google it if you want it's called the soweto riot sleep at night i can only dream in red right because that's the level of bloodshed that was happening at the time specifically when speaking and referring to steve beaker and what was happening at the time it was actually quite tragic right it's a very fascinating story in terms of what happened here in south africa and the freedom fighters and the people that fought for it and what they um and what they did and even um after that even after the fact that you know nelson mandela got in you know he became president of south africa and he only served one term because he believed he was a freedom fighter and not a politician he literally i don't know how to run a country you know i'm a freedom fighter i only brought the country to liberation and uh he, he did one term but after that he handed it over to uh Thabo Mbeki, who won the election also brilliant brilliant president uh Thabo Mbeki. um he was an economist he was an economist and he was good at what he did uh and then we handed it over well it got it literally got struggled away from Thabo Mbeki, actually by Jacob Zuma and then we went to shit <laughs> it's an Africa went to fucking shit you know what I mean our political order went to absolute shit and the absolute thievery that uh, ensued after that was just absolutely frightening Outside world is black and white with only one
what's crazy, I'll tell you a quick story. Like, you know, when I went to Europe and you, you, you go to like restaurants and things like that and you get served by the service staff, by waiters and things like that. And specifically when I was in Italy, I found that there were the, the, peop- the restaurants I was going to and I don't know, I think it was just so happened that, yes, people are having tough times and, you know, economically and whatever else. And because of the war in Ukraine and things went up in prices, it, um, um, uh, gas prices went up, which puts ele- electricity prices up. So, yes, they were going through like a tough time. But you go to like a restaurant, right? Now, over there, like the, the service staff over there, their minimum wage is actually a, li- a livable wage, right? A, a livable wage, it's like what, 2,000, 2,300 euros essentially a month and um it's a livable wage essentially the people that serve you right if you go to a fancy restaurant the people that serve you the steak that you ordered can eat can afford to eat the steak that that you ordered right they themselves can sit down and afford to eat that very same steak because um their their uh, minimum wage is good enough for them to be able to afford that. In South Africa, they can't do that. The minimum wage in South Africa, if you had to convert it, we're talking about 200 euros, 200, 300 euros, right? That's the minimum wage, a month. Just think about that, a month, right? And that's why these people live in abject poverty, which is an absolute travesty. But the crazy thing about that, even though the majority of the country sort of lives like that, you know, the ones that hold jobs like waiters and retail staff and um, um, checkout counter staff and things like that, right, cashiers and stuff like that, every single one of them, and I swear to you, I'm not even joking, every single one of them in South Africa will crack a smile, will engage with your child, will just... Like they happy people. Like these people are not. These people are not rich people. Not by any. Like not even. Not even middle class. These people are literally poor people living on the breadline, right? And they can actually serve you with a smile. They were still happy. Do you know what I mean? They serve you with a smile. They can't afford to buy what you're ordering, right? But they're professional about it. They they serve you with a smile. They just happy. Right. Well, I didn't find that in uh, in uh, um, Italy. I didn't find that in Europe. Everyone was just everyone was so stuck up, and everyone was like, there were, every waiter, every waitering staff that was serving me, right, was like they were doing me a favor, man. Everything like they're doing you a favor to do something. You're like you do, you're too afraid to ask for something because God forbid you're gonna piss the person off. And I'm like, just it's so different in terms of like, buddy, you haven't seen poverty, man. You haven't seen, you haven't walked five minutes around this earth to actually see what real poverty looks like. Do you know what I mean? And they're just happier people. They're just happier people. I must be honest. The Africans are just happier, naturally happier people, right? They make do with very, very little. And they've got an incredible spirit about them. And I'm not obviously blanket casing the whole of Europe and all the European people. I'm just saying it was my uh, um, experience. So maybe somewhat a- anecdotal, right? But there was a, a, it was almost everywhere I was going. And people just looked miserable, absolutely miserable. Firstly, they're living inside of a painting because Italy is absolutely gorgeous, right? So they're living inside of a painting. They're living with a good minimum wage. The majority of them can actually afford to live decently, right? And they just, they, they can't fathom to show you that they're happy about it. It's like, it's like, I just don't get it. But anyway, that's just a story to share with you. Carry on.
just so beautiful. I love playing for change, man. They really are. They, they're so, they're so, the concept is so great. You know what I mean? It always leaves me with goosebumps. It's always such a heartwarming um, um, reaction uh, because it's always so beautiful. Watching now. I love Peter Gabriel's work. I think Peter Gabriel's so great. So, 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 so great. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think down below. That was absolutely epic. I will catch you on the very next one. Peace.